Hello fourth graders, welcome to your grammar lesson for today. We are going to be talking about suffixes. Last week we talked about prefixes, which was a group of letters added to the beginning of a word that kind of changed the meaning a little bit. So we learned about four different suff um, prefixes and this week we are going to talk about some suffixes which pretty much the same except that it's a group of letters that are added to the end of a word. So a prefix, remember pre means before, and a suffix is a group of letters added to the end of a word, and the letters change the meaning of the word. So instead of whispering to your partner, I just want you to repeat to yourself, a suffix is a group of letters that are added to the end of a word. Okay, let's look at some. If we have the word beauty and we add full to the end of it, we've got a new word which means be which is beautiful. So beauty means something is really good to look at. Full is our suffix. It doesn't mean much on its own, but when you add it on the end of beauty, it changes the word and it becomes beautiful. And beautiful means just something beautiful to look at, right? The suffix changes the meaning. It's kind of describing something. So full means filled with. So whenever you see a word that has full on the end, it means filled with. So beautiful means filled with beauty. It's not just beauty. It's filled with beauty. Okay. The sunset was beautiful. The sky was beautiful, filled with beauty. Okay. So whenever you see full, full on the end, the suffix, it means filled with. So if full means filled with, what do each of these words mean? We've got graceful, colorful, thoughtful. Hmm. Full means filled with. So this will mean filled with grace. Something is colorful, it means it's filled with color. Something, someone is thoughtful, it means filled with thought. Hmm, does that make sense? And sometimes even though the suffix is on the end, when we talk about what that means, we may say the beginning, we may say um, what it means at the beginning, like we would say filled with grace. We wouldn't say grace filled with. Or we could say grace filled or color filled or thought filled. Or we could say filled with grace, filled with color, filled with thought. Okay. As long as we remember that full, fill means filled with. Whenever we see that suffix. We've got another suffix here and it's the suffix less. Home plus less equals home less. So home is our root word. And the suffix is less. And now we've got a new word that kind of means something different. Mm, the suffix changes the meaning. So a home is where we belong or where we live or where we have family. It's our home where we belong. But less means without. So if someone's homeless, they're without a home. So whenever you see less, the suffix less means without. So if less means without, what do each of these words mean? Wireless, hearless, fearless. Hmm. Wireless. You're probably too young to remember. The telephones used to have wires connecting the handle to the receiver and then to the wall and then there were wires connecting everything. Now, telephones are wireless without wires, because less means without. Without wires, wireless. Um, hearless, without hear. When my husband has a beard, he has hair on his face, and when he shaves it off, he's hearless, without hair. He doesn't have hair on his face. Hearless, less means without. And then fearless. Now, if you're a Fear. If you're feeling fear, you're afraid and you're scared. But if you're fearless, you are without fear. You are not afraid. Because less means without. Okay? 
See how it changes the meaning? Let's look at another one. Er. Er on its own isn't even a word, but it's a suffix. You put it on the end of a word and it kind of changes the meaning a little bit. So here we have garden, which is our root word, plus er, the suffix, and it, we've got a new word, gardener. See how the meaning kind of changes? Because garden and gardener are not the same. <laughs> a garden, well, you know what that is. We have the soil and we have plants and they're either growing, we could have vegetables that we're growing in the garden that we want to eat to keep healthy so we could grow food or we could grow plants and flowers for shade, for, um, for beauty because we enjoy them um, to, for coverage so that people can't, neighbors can't look in our windows. Um, so a garden is a place where we grow plants. When we add er on the end, it becomes garden er. And er means one who. So that means one who gardens. A gardener is someone, or one who gardens. So whenever you see er on the end, it means someone who, or one who does whatever er is attached to. So what would each of these words mean? Driver, teacher, writer. Well, instead of just drive, we've got driver. So the er means one who drives. An Uber driver is one who drives an Uber. A teacher, the er means someone who teaches. I'm a teacher. Writer is one who writes. You are all writers because you write. Hmm? Okay, last suffix that we're going to talk about is the word, is the suffix li with an ly, and it's really common. Um, there are a lot of adverbs that have the ly on the end because they describe how a verb is done. And remember, a verb is an action word. So lots of li words kind of tell how things are done. So here we have quiet. And you know what quiet means? No noise. Quiet. And if we add Lee on the end, it changes the meaning a little bit. Quiet Lee. It means the way you're being quiet or the way you're doing something. So quiet. No noise. But Lee means in a way that is. So it's describing the way that you are doing something. So quietly means in a way that is quiet. So when you see Lee, think in a way that is. It's kind of like the way you're doing the action. So if Lee, the L-Y, means in a way that is, what do each of these words mean? Seriously, poorly, loudly. Serious, that means not laughing, no smiling, serious business. If we're doing something seriously or taking something seriously, we are doing it in a way that is serious. No joking around. Now, poorly. Poor. If I did a poor job at something, I did not do my best. I did a quick rush job on my homework. I could say that I did my homework poorly because I did a poor job. I did it in a way that is poor. Poorly. Loudly. Loud means a lot of noise, a lot of volume. And if I do something in a way that is loud, I am doing it loudly. And that's what the li means, in a way that is. Okay, so let's use our suffixes. The four that we've learned, full means filled with, less means without, er means one who, and li means in a way that is. Let's use those suffixes and root words to make a word for each definition here. Without harm. Without. Remember that without was our suffix less. So we would say without harm is harmless. Harmless. Oh, that dog is harmless. He won't bite. That means without harm. Okay, because we've got that less, because it means without. Okay, one who reads. One who. Do you remember which suffix that is? That was the er suffix, like a teach er is one who teaches. So a read 
one who reads is going to be a reader. Yeah, you're going to add the er to the end. Okay. In a way that is sweet. So describing a way something is done, describing an action. Remember, it's that li, that ly. So we would say sweetly, singing sweetly, singing in a way that is sweet. And the last one, filled with care. Remember, filled with is full. So if we do something in a way that is filled with care, it is a careful way of doing something. Okay. So we've got less, er, li, and full. Those are our four suffixes. And you are actually going to find that we have a um, Google form that we want you to fill out for today. You're going to put your name in, of course. And then what does the word mean? Act or, well, actually, or can be like the er. And so I would say that would be one who acts. Okay. So I will type one who acts. Okay. What does the word suddenly mean? Well, we've got this lee. Remember that means in a way that is. So I would say in a way that is sudden. But I am a fourth grader, so I am going to use a capital letter at the beginning to put a period at the end. Okay. What does the word mean? Powerful. Well, look at the suffix again. Full means filled with, right? So this must mean filled with power. Okay. So I want you to go through. I want you to fill out the Google form showing that you can remember what these um, suffixes, the groups of letters at the end of a word, they have a specific meaning, change the meaning of a word, what they mean. Okay. There's 10 questions, I think, on the form for you to complete. And then you are done with your grammar for today and be looking out and you're reading and you're writing. Can you spot suffixes? And maybe some of those prefixes from last week. Off you go.